ครับครับเอ็นเอ็นสเตทเฮ้ยโอเคโอเคโอเค Let me speak to my people. Uh huh. Now let me speak to you. I know the stress people go through when they want to send money from abroad to their family members and loved ones in Ghana and in even Africa. See, if you are in the USA, hmm? if you are in London, UK, Canada, you know Europe, any part of the world. See, tap tap send has made it very easy. All you have to do is to tap and tap. And send within a twinkle of an eye, your money will be sent with no stress. It's very fast, convenient, and easy to access everywhere. What are you waiting for? Just tap, tap, <laughs> and send. <laughs> Download Tap Tap Send now on Google Play and App Store. Tap Tap Send. It's secure, convenient, easy, and fast. <laughs> So I am still on sets of Zongo Boys. I'm talking to some of the actors here. I, I have already talked to Jackie, Pusha, uh, Kasum, and then Ziggy. Now I have Jamaik from Nigeria. He's also here uh, shooting this movie. Good afternoon, sir. It's an honor meeting you. Same here. Uh, Zongo Boys, what's your role in it, please? Mm, I play Farouk um, in the movie. Yes. Just Farouk. Oh, okay. What is the role of Farouk in Zongo Boys? Well, um, you might call him the dissident, the one that um, his voice is um, obviously amplifies the sentiments of the Muslim community as regards to a cross-pollination of cultures, a cross-pollination of religious, um, you know, relationships between Christians and Muslims. So I think. Um, in more ways than one, it represents the sentiment, um, the modern sentiments of that union. Okay, so looking at the storyline of the movie, I mean, um, Christians marrying uh, Muslim difficulties, what will it tell us when it comes to such a, a situation? Well, I think it's something that um, it's um, reading the, the sands of times. Um, this is as old as civilization, if I might say. Um, way back in the days of Isaac and Jacob, this has um, been the issue of late, um, of old, I beg your pardon. So um, to, to do that, recreate it right now through the prism of a film, I think is something that is long overdue. Of course, you, you know that there have been many representations of um, this situation. Um, many of us have gone through it, if you've gone through modern times, dated modern times. I'm sure you've run into somebody that shares a different either idiosyncrasies, political affiliation, creed or religion, culture, status from you. But in any case, um, I mean, the world is a melting point now. And uh, I think this is really an old idea, an old ideology that should be abolished at its best. It doesn't serve the, um, the modernity of the human cause. It certainly doesn't serve um, people that just wish to get on with life. I have dated um, um, Muslims and, and it went on um, quite well. Of course, um, at the end of the day, when it came to the final question to be popped, it became a problem because um, there were people on the other end that their voices were very vocal as regards that relationship. And also, as a Christian man growing up, I've had um, relatives that have dated across the divide as well. And it always ends up being an issue. So um, is it um, something that's ripe, an issue, an ideology that's ripe to be addressed? Yes, it is. Is it um, being addressed the right way? No, it's not. Um, is this movie going to lean some kind of credence to that narrative, to that conversation? Yes, I think our sole responsibility as um, filmmakers is to amplify the societal ills so that people can begin to have a conversation about it. And at the very first, um, to force people to come to the table to have a conversation about it. Men at the helm of affairs for this political leanings to also have a conversation about it. It doesn't serve our cause generally at the end of the day that there are these segregations where people at least um, cannot um, be together simply for, for the reason of um, religious difference. Let's look at your role in this movie, being a big brother to Jackie and then um, hiring guys to go and beat the pastor. Um, should, not in this movie, but like uh, I'm using it as an example. Should that be the case when maybe I want to be with a Muslim lady and then her sibling doesn't want me? Should, should it turn like, like that? 
Well, violence has never been the answer. I've never been a proponent of violence. Um, I will not. I will not agree to it. I never subscribe to it. But and there are people that feel that it is readily the tool of choice in expressing their, you know, disagreement with another person. Um, I think there's so many ways one can resolve a problem without um, taking up arms, as it were. Um, but this film portrays the the true identity of um, what transpires in these realms. It portrays, um, and if you look very closely at um, some of the causes of, of disagreement that um, are degenerating to wars and civil unrest, it, it consecrates around, around not only politics but religion. Yeah. So people have used religion as a manipulating tool to their own selfish end, as you know. Um, it's been done many times in my country as a Nigerian. We've seen it time and again that transpired and transcended different religion and generations. Um, I'm sure it happens in Ghana as well. It's a global phenomenon. Um, I've never subscribed to it. There are people, um, I have a friend that is um, Jewish. I also have a friend that is Muslim. And we do business together. You know, we're in Dubai recently. And recently I asked my friend that is, that is a Zionist, that is a Jewish. And I said, how do you live in Dubai and then you run such a successful business empire? And he said he's an orthodox Jew and the other person is an orthodox Muslim. So, I mean, two people with different ideologies, different religious leaning can coexist in the same space. And there's no violence there. All we do is make money and coexist in a relationship that thrives for everybody. So it can happen, I've seen it happen. The people that choose violence, I just think that they don't have the intellect to pursue other, other resolutions. In cases like this, how do you solve it? With By what we're doing, it's, um, it's the highest voice. It's the most amplified voice. The tool of movie making is one of the strongest, most amplified tool in the world. Um, I just finished a film called Back Home, and uh, it's a chronicle of the, eco you know, the social media ecosystem. I couldn't very well come out and say denounce the leanings of people's ideology as regards how they conduct themselves within that public domain. But when the movie was created and the skit was created. And the chaos will find attention, and then the conversation ensued. So I think this is the most amplified medium by which a prism that people can begin to, you know, understand that a conversation must be had as against violence. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Hey, okay. Hey, no grace gifts. No entry. It could be surprising. If you're right. I think I'm full. What's your name? No grace gifts. Have a clinic. No entry. Some of them are young. What's your name? It's about to rent. Man, who's your life? Now, I'm proud to make a semua. Who knows? I'm proud to be here. What a good friend. If you're right. Mami misau. Adi a pan. What's our grace gifts? Have a clinic. What? And you're too shy. Chin chin. I'm going to have a problem. I'm going to have a problem. Doctor Grace Bob. You're going to grace gifts. Have a clinic. So we is happy quarter. Achacha. Any humwa. That they be our best. Malaria, hypertension, ulcer, stroke, or banana bema. We hear war bema or top nada. Just say yeah, dear boy. And what you miss? Yeah, no one be paid to watch water. Petrol or beer. Grace Gift Herbal Clinic. Mo. One phone number is zero two four six five one eight zero zero three. And a zero two four four one two six one two three.